Tunisian front, a quagmire of mud. Here, mobile guns and armored units of the British General Montgomery's 8th Army move over practically non-existent roads in their relentless drive to throw the Nazis out of North Africa. Ben Gardain, restored to the French, is only a few miles from German positions. As these films are issued, the British were attacking the entire Marath line with tanks and big guns. Nazi prisoners are rounded up. 1,400 were taken in a single day. Kasserine Pass in Middle Tunisia, scene of bitter fighting as the Allies hammer Rommel on three fronts. General Henri Giraud and his staff visit French troops now fighting with their traditional allies. The Commander-in-Chief, American General Dwight Eisenhower, discussing plans for the final offensive. Always to be found where the fighting is heaviest, General Eisenhower has won the admiration and respect of his officers and men. Here is a general trained to fight a mechanized war. Already the wily Rommel has felt the power of his arms. China has been sending thousands of her young men to aviation schools in America. Here, from expert United States Army Air Force instructors, they learn to fly every type of combat plane, learn to handle everything from training ships to the biggest bombers. thousand miles from home, they experience the day for which they long have worked, graduation. And to these eager young men of China, graduation means more than official recognition of ability. It means that finally China, their China, is prepared to meet the Jap invader on even terms. From Major General P.T. Mao, Vice Commissioner of Aeronautics for China, cadets receive their wings become full-fledged officers in the Chinese Air Force. Aerial salute for the graduating class from a squadron of fast P-38s. And a feminine salute from modern daughters of the new China. This, say the boys, is worth working for. American submarine flotilla returns from one of the most daring raids of the war, a land invasion of a Japanese-held island by United States Marines. Admiral Nimitz, Pacific Fleet Commander, comes to personally congratulate the officers. Lieutenant Colonel Evans Carlson, famed throughout the South Pacific as leader of Carlson's Raiders, and Lieutenant Colonel James Roosevelt, eldest son of the president, his second in command. Booty captured during the 40-hour attack, which wiped out the entire Japanese garrison, including planes and gunboats. A two-handed Jap sword is brought back as a souvenir for the admiral. U.S. casualties were few, and they all came back. Island by island, base by base, America is increasing her blows against the Japanese. Flying squadrons of amphibious scout cars, America's newest and most flexible of mechanized equipment.
traveling by water as well as on land, these seagoing motor cars can hurl a striking force across streams and rivers at incredible speed. They roll ashore under the same power that drives them through the water. Blitz buggies from America to smash the Axis. Now an ammunition factory, one of hundreds engaged in turning out the millions of rounds of small arms ammunition needed by the United Nations. Plants working day and night. Ammunition for planes fitted onto machine gun belts and packed ready for instant use. Steel jacketed messengers of death from America to smash the Axis. Another factory in the arsenal of democracy. Here, the powerful new tank destroyers are forged in numbers that would stagger the enemy. Rolling out to the testing ground. Faster than the tank, the M10, as the Army calls it, is capable of destroying the heaviest armored vehicles yet seen in the field. Today, the great highways of America are alive with truck transports, speeding weapons and supplies from inland factories to the coast. Big guns destined for some far-flung fighting front. Invasion barges rolling from plants in the interior over high-speed highways to the sea. Tons of supplies, food, equipment, all United States transportation mobilized to smash the Axis. In the field, artillerymen test the powerful new 240 millimeter howitzers, some of the heaviest weapons in service. From carefully concealed positions, the Big Berthas of the Army speak. capable of hurling 300-pound projectiles many miles with amazing accuracy. from America, speaking the only language the Axis understands. 